Look at what they did to my boy, man. Everything is so wrong about this shotgun, and it goes deep. I plan to break it down step by step, how this thing just falls flat, how it just flat out isn't it at all. And there's also some things to understand about shotguns, the current state that they're in, how things are going, how this thing fits into PVE and the Crucible. It's just brutal. Is there some silver lining? Sure, I'm gonna talk about some of that, but something to know about me as far as how I review something. I don't judge anything until I get it in my hands, and when I do get it, for myself, my work, my channel, I grind the game, I actually want and use the weapons that I talk about in videos. And when it comes to roles for these reviews, I need to see how things perform. I wanna show you, tell you about them. I grind until I have the combinations. If it's a four out of five, even a three out of five, if that's all I can get, I can talk about the bridge making it a five out of five. I do have the rules for this thing. I have the ones that I want to talk about. Now, Mindbenders, at one point, was the meta shotgun. If you acquired it, you knew exactly what that meant, what you went through over and over and over going for the roll. One of the most tedious nightfalls, the hollowed lair. Damage gates, weird wipes, just miserable. But if you got a good roll, it was worth it. And the curated roll had opening shot with Rampage. It had things like slide shot, quick draw. And remember, slide shot grants plus 20 range. Right after that knee slide, it had snapshot, threat detector in that left column. In the right column, last column, it was quick draw, moving target. There was rampage. So everyone was excited to get their hands on an adept version. More stats, adept mods, but we got a weapon that has zero identity. The current Mindbender, acquired through a PvE activity, breaking news, shocking, is actually a better PvE weapon than Crucible. But even in PvE, it falls completely on its face, like zero identity there too. But I do want to start with the Crucible. Like, in issue, spread shotguns are in a horrible state, especially the aggressive frames, these high-impact, hard-hitting ones. When you start getting into the numbers, the breakdown of these frames versus others, very clear answers. Bungie closed in the one-shot distance. They have horrible base stats as far as handling, range, and those two things are the biggest things on a shotgun, the most important things, like handling and range aside from some outlier perks. So out of the gate, these have a four and a half, five meter kill distance. They shoot slow. They don't handle well. The frame itself, if you get a hit, it does fire a little bit faster. But it comes down to making up your mind on those two stats, range and handling. So when you look at those barrels, like we have rifled, cool, plus 10 range, but your handling goes down to 16. That's a no-go. Full choke. Okay, better spread, but you still have a base 29 range. That's a no-go. Smooth bore, wider cone spread. That's a no-go. That leaves us with corkscrew, barrel shroud, and small bore. Those are the best options, and the best all-around stats are going to be barrel shroud with accurized. That's 39 range, 41 handling, and at this point, it's hitting that 5 meter range but it still has just poor stats. But where I'm going with this, with those two options, high range, high handling, if you go high handling, maybe get lucky on the masterwork, add on adept handling, add in quick charge for plus 20 handling, you get to something like 81 total handling. Like that's cool, but you're still gonna have that around five meter range. You can maybe add on fragile focus, get those six and a half meter long distance kills. But why? Here's the issue with that. Let's remember it's a chance, a chance at five meters, a chance at six and a half meters for the one hit kill. I've felt like lightweights have been the kings for a while, and when you break it down, like, without remorse, this isn't even crafted. You can craft this shotgun. This is a non-crafted version. It's rifled barrel, accurized, threat, elemental. 75 range, it has 100 handling with the threat detector scaler, and it has a faster fire rate, hitting at 6 meters. If I miss at 5, 5.5 meters at 6, I follow up with that faster fire rate. It's still going to outdo a Mindbender, period. Same with Reese Walker, same with the CQC-12. That one has quick draw. It has a meter more range. It's got the faster lightweight bonus, better handling. It's just a no-brainer. I think the lightweights crush this. But let's start talking about the direct competition. As much as people hate it, Felwinter is a 10 times better PvP shoddy. Out of the gate, out of the box, off the lot, six and a half meter range. You don't have to do Nightfalls. You can get one right there at the kiosk. It's set up for success. Plus 20 range on a slide. Has the best shotgun perk in the game, opening shot. It's just there, at the vault. No fire team needed. Then of course, found Verdict. The best aggressive, especially time lost. Slide opening. Adept mod, seven meter kills. That is worth grinding for. It's worth doing those raid encounters opposed to GM Nightfalls for this. And then, oh yeah, slugs exist. And there's a certain trial slug I'm gonna cover next video that is worth a pickup. And when you get into these perks and look at them, my philosophy is that certain perk combinations can demand respect. Like they can do well if there's synergy. Third column, slide ways, not slide shot. So this doesn't give range. It gives plus 20 handling and plus 20 stability. You get some ammo back. Snapshot, threat detector, pugilist, lead from gold, autoloading. And the last column, steady hand, swashbuckler, one-two punch, well-rounded, fragile focus, incandescent. All of these perk combinations are so deterministic on a scenario, right? Well-rounded, you need to throw an ability. Swashbuckler, you need to get a melee kill. 
Steady hands, you need to get a kill. Fragile focus, you don't need to be shot. And since there's no opening shot, other perks that rise on a shotgun are damage perks, because that could get you that consistent six and a half meters, almost seven meters, because the damage is being pushed out further. So that brings us right to Swashbuckler. Like times five, get that melee final blow, 33% more. If you get that going, it's gonna do pretty good. But when I say pretty good, it's getting those kills that like lightweights that I went over, those are getting. The felt winter gets and they don't really have to do anything and as i go on here like no matter what combination you go through it's just painful there's no rhyme or reason why you should stick with it and one of the things i wanted to try was threat detector swashbuckler and threat detector is one of the top three perks in this column for the crucible it makes the most sense you always get that 0.75 handling animation scaler because you're going to be close to an enemy you add in quick charge it's feeling pretty decent but again for this to perform you have to lean one way or the other range or handling because the in between is just pitiful like if you have 32 range, 40 handling. You might as well just lean. And with this particular role, when I got swash times five going, sometimes a times one stack, like back-to-back -back kills, it did okay. But in the end, it's not worth it. Like go get a fell winter. Next, I was like, well, one thing that could work is pure speed. So I got it. I was excited about it. It's a four out of five. We can bridge in the missing perk. It's corkscrew, assault mag, snapshot, steady hands. We have a stability masterwork. That could have been range. That could have been handling. That's the bridge. But the idea is that City Hands completely negates everything wrong about handling on a weapon. So this is gonna be combined with Snapshot. You're gonna get a kill with a shotgun. You have super fast swap speed from one weapon to the other and Mindbender having Snapshot added for even more speed. But even if I did have the range master work, like this is too short. It leaves way too many people one shot. It doesn't clean up well. And you can do this just better with a lightweight at all times and the lightweights are getting the deeper one-hit kills. And honestly, a little tip here, when it comes to steady hands, you want it on the other weapon, like New Purpose, Submission, and Yo-D. Many others, you would get a kill with the primary and you unlock super quick draw for this shotgun. And of course you can run double steady hands. Pretty much every time you get a kill, you have that super quick draw. But if you're gonna be doing that with let's say a new purpose or a primary weapon that has steady hands, you might as well quick draw right into the opening shot Felwinter. And then the last one, Fragile Focus. I went rifled barrel, range masterwork, adept range, assault mag. It has 19 handling, we're doing the best that we can. So I leaned heavy. I have on plus 20 from quick charge. We have threat detector. That's gonna help the handling scaler. It also has dexterity. But the issue here, the blessing and the curse is fragile focus. Like 79 range, it's gonna do a little bit better at six, six and a half meters. But without it, you're gonna be getting shot as you come into engagements. It's just a base shotgun with bad handling, period. If it doesn't have fragile focus, it's just a base bad shotgun. You would need something like jug. You would need something like invis, making sure that you don't take damage. And when it worked, it worked decently, but I, I'm gonna come right back to Lightweights, come right back to Fell Winter, Found Verdict. There's no reason. The perks suck, the frame sucks, the experience sucks, it slows you down. Go get one of the ones mentioned. And there's another perk, as far as PvP, that could be warranted, and that's gonna lead us right into PvE. One-two punch. One-two punch, as far as PvE, is great. Maybe Warm God, Winter's Guile, Liar's Handshake, Land a Shotgun Shot, every pellet of that shotgun shot, 200% more damage for that melee, 350% versus bosses, and certain builds can just one-shot targets. It's cool. And in the Crucible, if you play Trials, a one-two punch shotgun is needed at all times. Maybe it's freelance, maybe you don't play too much, or maybe you do play in a fire team. Have one on you, because the bubble and the well come up frequently in that fourth round, possibly third. A one-two punch shotgun is one of the only things that you have that can take that out. So as you're switching from round three to round four, put a one-two punch on. But when I saw one-two punch, I thought, well, that could have some PvP use, but definitely in PvE, right? And we look at it, something like this. We have lead from gold, one-two punch. Something like Pugilist 1 2 is going to be so great. We also see Incandescent, and like it's fun, it's fun, but another massive issue, like again, bringing up identity, how it just falls flat, how it's just all wrong without remorse. It's another solar shotgun. You want Incandescent? Get it enhanced. You want 1 2 punch for a solar shotgun that has utility? get a faster fire rate, and oh yeah, it's enhanced, you don't need to land all the pellets. You want 95, 100 range on a shotgun? Fragile Focus Remorse. Get it enhanced for a quicker time for Fragile Focus to come back. Zero identity. Everywhere I looked, everything just walked circles around it. It's a GM weapon. Time needs to be spent on it. If I were you, I recommend putting that time into crafting, or just simply go buy a Felwinter if you want this frame. Or you can use one of your favorite lightweights. You could use a slug. Pretty much anything outside of a rapid fire shotgun, and even some of those with trench barrel are better. The silver lining is that it does have one two punch, it has lead from gold, but it's not gonna be viable in harder content. Another one is that we know that changes are coming, we know that spread is getting looked at, maybe some other things, but as of right now, Mindbender's up as one of the all around worst weapons in the game. Not just for PvE, not just for the Crucible, overall, it's terrible. 
If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching. And until the next one, I am Cool Guy.